Hi guys, this is Annalise from Pen Daily. Welcome back to our channel. So here it is, the Oppo Find X3 Pro. I've had the privilege to play with this phone and do some simple tests for a couple of days. And today, I'm going to tell you what I think of this phone so far. So here's the short-term review of the Oppo Find X3 Pro. Enjoy! So let's start with the design. The Find X3 Pro has a blue glass back with a dual tone finish that makes the color look even more attractive than usual. It also has anti-glare material on the back surface, meaning that it not only makes the back of the phone extremely smooth, but also makes it fingerprint free. Being around 8.25 mm thick and less than 200 grams in weight, the phone is quite comfortable in the hand. Thanks to not only the weight and thickness, but also the overall design of the phone, the entire back surface is made of a single piece of glass and unlike other recent phones there's a smooth and gradual transition from the back of the phone to the camera module of Find X3 Pro making the camera module less noticeable and also making the entire phone feel more cohesive and balanced also it makes the phone a little bit studier when on a flat surfaces at the same time the front of the phone also needs to fit to the overall design language to make the phone feel cohesive and that's where the 93% screen to body ratio screen comes in which also follows a similar pattern to the back as we can see there's a curve at both edges to the screen that blends with the back smoothly without any noticeable bumps and this is what gives the phone a premium feeling Speaking of display, the X3 Pro features a 6.7-inch corner-to-corner display with a 120Hz refresh rate. It is near 3K screen that supports HDR10+, basically meaning that text and images will appear sharp. And the scrolling experience will be very smooth, but that's not what makes the phone stand out the most. It is the colors in the display that distinguishes this phone from the crowd. The brilliant color display, as Oppo calls it, is able to cover 100% of the DCI-P3 color space and has a 10-bit color depth. In simple language, it means that it can show more accurate colors that resemble how we see the world in real life, because it is capable of showing around 1 billion colors. Instead of the only 16.7 million colors where most smartphones max out at, at the same time, the cameras are also capable of shooting in a billion colors, and I will get to it later. There's one thing special about this phone's color technology, and that's color vision enhancement. Despite the amazing display of the phone, there are certain things that prevent us from enjoying all the colors of the world, and that's color blindness. So what Oppo has done here is to offer 765 different color correction solutions and choose the best fit for each person's unique situation through a hue and color test. That way, more people can experience a richer, more vibrant world when using this phone. Next, the operating system was Color OS 11.2. There are some features that stood out to me when using this phone. And the first thing is the amount of customizations that you can have on this phone. Wallpaper, icon styles, app layouts, front and display size, always on display and more. Some people say your phone can sometimes show your personality, and this freedom of choice can certainly be something that I will keep experimenting. Also, something to note here is the three different methods available for unlocking your phone. Traditional passwords, facial recognitions, as well as in-display fingerprint sensors. During the pandemic, having multiple ways to unlock your phone is definitely a plus for me, especially when you are wearing a mask that stops your phone from recognizing your face. Also, unlocking with fingerprints and faces are both lightning fast, which is a huge part in the user experience. Another software feature that I wish to mention is the Oppo Calm app. In recent years, as we began to focus more on mental health and find balance between work and rest, Oppo has developed this app for further help us achieve the balance. At the same time, what is special for this phone is that this time, the phone includes a ringtone that is actually composed by the legendary film composer Hans Zimmer, so that the phone gives a more humanistic touch to it. However, those ringtones are still not available yet, but I'm definitely going to try them out once the OTA update is here. Now, let's move on to something that is equally important as the display on this phone, the cameras. On the back, we have a quad camera system, including a wide, ultra-wide, telephoto, and micro lenses. Here are the photo samples that I took with this phone. The two main cameras are the wide and ultra-wide lenses that are capable of capturing 10-bit photos in both 1 billion colors and 50 megapixels. Keep in mind that both are turned off by default and they cannot be turned on at the same time. 
Here's the comparison between normal 10-bit photo and the 50-megapixel fit photo. In terms of image quality, both modes do pretty great. But when you zoom in, you will see that the 50-megapixel mode does a little bit better than the 10-bit mode, as expected. So if you are doing some landscape photos, this mode definitely comes in handy. But what's the use of 10-bit? Let's take a look at these two photos, one in 8-bit and one in 10-bit. Can you see the difference? Probably not, right? The reason why we shoot in 10-bit is for post-production. If you're planning to change the colors and do some color grade like what I'm doing right now on my phone, then 10-bit will give you more flexibility to work with because it offers more colors for you. So back to those two images, when we begin to do some intense color grade, we begin to see those blocks of color. This is the result of not having enough colors to work with. When we look at the 10-bit version, we don't see those tiny blocks of colors anymore. So what's the takeaway? As a rule of thumb, if you plan to do some color grading on your computer, then use the 10-bit mode. If you're taking photos that you need extreme details, like a landscape shot, then use the 50-megapixel mode. If you're just snapping pictures to record slices of life, the normal 8-bit will be plenty for you. Plus, this time the phone also includes a feature called AI Palette, which allows you to make your phone match the tone of other photos that you like, without worrying about learning any new softwares to edit those photos. Other than the two main cameras, the micro lenses and the 5x telephoto lenses also come in handy in various situations, such as taking photos of something that is just too far away or something just too small with the normal lenses. There is even microscopic mode for you to be creative. Let's see if you can guess what these photos are. Now moving on to the videos, we all know that unstable footage is what takes the viewers out from the scenery. So the main white camera is equipped with optical image stabilization, and when combined with electronics but stabilization, we have ultra steady pro mode that gives you videos like this. Even though there is a slight delay when using this mode, I think the stabilization is definitely worth it. Also, the X3 Pro includes a cinematic mode for more advanced video shooters, and it offers log profiles, HDR modes, histogram viewing, as well as full menu control over exposure settings. Here's a short clip that I shot with the cinematic mode. Enjoy! In terms of battery, the X3 Pro has a 4500mAh battery inside, which is giving me enough battery power throughout the day. Even if you do run out of the power, the Super Vogue charging ensures that your phone will be back to 40% in just 10 minutes using your 65W supercharger. In our experiment, it only took 26 minutes to charge from 7% to 100%.
That's all we have for you today. Are you interested in this new phone? Please let us know in the comments down below. If you enjoyed this video, please give us a like and share it with your friends. If you haven't subscribed to our channel already, please do so. If you want to see more innovative videos about tech and business in China. See you next time. Bye.